In this video, we're going to take a look at how you actually use that VSEPR chart. We're going to start with a Lewis dot structure for molecule, and then we'll use that chart to figure out what uh, the VSEPR structure would be. Now, here in the spring of 2020, since we have moved to this online format for classes, you will have access to the VSEPR chart when you take a quiz or a test. So you don't need to memorize octahedral versus tetrahedral and, and bent versus T-shaped and, and all those sorts of things because that chart will be right there and you can just go and look everything up in it. However, if you are a chem major, or if you need to take organic chemistry, you need to memorize the, um, the shapes and the bond angles for two, three, and four domains, because those are huge in organic chemistry. You will be expected on the first day of organic chemistry to know linear, trigonal planar, uh, and bent, which is its derived structure with one lone pair, and you'll be expected to know tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, and bent, which are the uh, uh, tetrahedral derived structures. So even though you get to use the chart um, this semester, going forward, that chart probably won't be available. So this is the chart that I'm talking about in the IGC, it's table 11.1. Um, the first column in this chart is telling us uh, how many electron domains there are. And this chart actually goes on for two more pages. Um, here on this first page, we're looking at two domains, three domains, and four domains. And then it breaks those down into bonding domains and lone pairs. Um, so if we have two electron domains and both of them are bonded, so no lone pairs, we're going to call that electron geometry linear. The molecular geometry will be the same. That will be the case anytime there's zero lone pairs or the number of domains is equal to the number of bonding domains. Um, in a linear structure, the bond angle is 180 degrees. And then they're showing you over here a model and, a, and an example compound of that. Um, with three electron domains, um, we have two possible structures because if one of those uh, domains is a lone pair, we get the derivative structure of trigonal planar. Um, whoa, that is a typo. That is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's the electron geometry structure it will be trigonal planar, um, but then the molecular geometry will be bent. Sorry, I briefly confused those two columns in my head. Um, then if we have four electron domains, we have the basic tetrahedral structure uh, for our electron geometry, uh, but then there are two more derived structures beyond that with lone pairs, the trigonal pyramidal, and the bent. This next page in the chart deals with having five electron domains, which is going to give us an electron geometry of trigonal bipyramidal. So notice that's the same in this column all the way down. If we don't have any lone pairs, of course, the molecular geometry is exactly the same, trigonal bipyramidal. Um, but we have three derived structures that come from placing lone pairs into the, um, the trigonal bipyramidal structure. The idea that we're going to follow in placing the electron uh, lone pairs versus the bonding pairs is that we want to get that electron lone pair as far away from the other um, uh, the other atoms as possible. So for the um, first one, the the spot to place it would be one of those equatorial positions because that puts it at 120 degrees to some of the atoms. If we were to place it in an axial position, it would be at 90 degrees to most of the atoms. And so that's it, it's better to put it in the equatorial position. Um, if we place a second lone pair, we're going to want to put that in an equatorial position as well. And we end up with a derived shape that's called um, uh, T-shaped, I forgot to mention, sorry, with one lone pair, uh, we call that seesaw. 
It's hard to see where that name seesaw comes from when it's drawn in this orientation, but if you could think about pushing uh, the shape over to the right and letting it fall down. Um, these two equatorial positions are like the support uh, for a seesaw, and then we would have the central atom, and then we would have the other two atoms, the axial atoms, going out. So if it's drawn in that orientation, it's a little bit clearer how that seesaw structure, how that name came about. Uh, and then in the last case, if we have three lone pairs, uh, all three of those lone pairs are going to go into the equatorial positions, and that's going to leave three atoms in a line. And so this derived structure would be referred to as linear. The last, uh, last page of this chart is for six electron domains, which is going to give us the octahedral electron geometry. Again, with no lone pairs, the molecular geometry is octahedral as well. However, if we have one lone pair, it doesn't matter where we put it, we can put it into any one of those six positions. And um, we're going to end up with a shape called square pyramidal. Um, if you think about putting that lone pair in that bottom position, that's probably the easiest way uh, to visualize what becomes the square pyramidal structure. You've got four atoms um, forming a square around the central atom, and then there's one atom popping up at the top, which is the tip of that pyramid. Um, however, when we put the second lone pair in, uh, which is the, the last line in this table, we want that lone pair to be as far away as possible from the other lone pair because lone pairs repel each other more strongly than they repel bonding pairs. So we want to put it on the opposite side of the molecule and that ends up in a structure that's called square planar. And in this drawing um, over here in the table, we're actually looking at that square planar structure edge on. If I were to grab the two atoms that are closest to us and push them down to get all of the atoms in that structure in the same plane. Um, we would have the uh, central atom and then we would have the four outside atoms and the corners of a square. And that's why this structure is called square planar because they are Every last one of these five atoms, they are all in the same plane, and the outside atoms form the shape of a square. All right, that was a lot of time spent going through and talking about all of those derived shapes. Um, for these next two example problems that I'm going to do, I'm going to assume that you have that reference chart easily at hand. Um, if you don't and you have to flip back in this presentation, just you know, pause it, scroll back as far as you need to go. Um, okay, so how do we turn this Lewis dot structure for ClF5 into its appropriate Vesper structure? Well, let's start by counting domains. So around our central chlorine, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, sorry, I... I miscounted there in my head briefly. We have uh, six domains um, around this uh, central chlorine atom. And so with six domains, our basic um, structure will be octahedral. And so I'll draw that central chlorine atom and then I'll have four positions um, that kind of form an X, and then I have the two positions going straight up and straight down. Um, with one of these positions being a lone pair, it doesn't matter where we put it. Um, the shape name is easiest to visualize if we put that lone pair at the bottom, but again, you can put that lone pair in any of the positions. And then you put the five fluorine atoms in the remaining positions. All right, so let's wrap this one up. The electron geometry is going to be octahedral because we had six domains. The molecular geometry, also known as the shape, is called square pyramidal. 
if you go back and look at that chart, we have six domains, one lone pair. Okay, we're going to just try that one over again. Uh, pyramidal, there we go. Um, if you go back and look at that chart, we have six domains, one lone pair. So it'll be octahedral electron geometry and square pyramidal uh, molecular geometry. And I'll try to sketch in a little bit here to try to help you see that square planar shape. These four fluorine atoms um, all form a square. And then they um, that one last fluorine is up above the square. So that's the tip of your pyramid, making this a square pyramidal structure. The bond angles are all 90 degrees. Um, if you go from fluorine to chlorine uh, to the top fluorine or fluorine uh, to the central chlorine to an adjacent fluorine, if you go directly across the pyramid, you could get, uh, say that the bond angle was 180 degrees as well. That would be, let's see if I can kind of illustrate that. That would be going, say, from this bottom left fluorine um, all the way across to the top right flooring, uh, that would be a line going across the bottom. All right, one last example here, xenon tetrafluoride. This is one of those weird compounds because uh, xenon's a noble gas. We've told you forever that noble gases don't form compounds. And now we're saying, oh, well, yeah, sometimes they do. Um, I had an upper level chemistry student uh, come talk to me at a social event. Um, he was actually pretty hot under the collar because he said everything I taught him in Gen Chem was wrong when he got into his upper level chemistry classes. We said that they're exceptions to everything. So yes, here is the your first potent or potentially your first moment like that in recognizing that we oversimplify things. And then as you take more chemistry classes, we get to delve in a little bit deeper and correct those misconceptions. Um, so for this compound, um, the first thing I'd like to do is count the domains on our central xenon atom. And here's one, two, three, four, five, six six domains, and of those six domains, two of them are lone pairs. So go back to the Vesper chart, look for six domains, and look for what happens when two of those domains are lone pairs. Okay, with six domains, we're going to have te uh, octahedral st structure, uh, electron geometry. So we'll draw the kind of squished over X, and then the line going straight up and the line going down. Um, when we have two lone pairs in octahedral geometry, we are actually going to put those lone pairs on opposite sides of one another. It's commonly drawn in the top and bottom positions, but you could have it running from the lower left to upper right position. They just have to be on opposite sides. And when we draw it this way, it's perhaps um, the easiest way to visualize that those four remaining fluorine atoms are all in the same plane and they're forming a square. So to kind of summarize this, our electron geometry is octahedral because we have six domains. Our molecular geometry or shape is called square planar because when we put um, those two electron lone pairs on opposite sides of this molecule, the four remaining fluorines uh, form a square and they are all in the same plane as the xenon atom. And our bond angles in here are either 90 degrees or 180 degrees, depending on whether you're going between adjacent fluorines or opposite fluorines. Hopefully at this point, you're seeing how to use the Vesper chart to turn a Lewis structure into a Vesper structure. You want to count domains on the central atom, see how many of those domains are lone pairs, and then the rest of the data that you need is right there on the chart.